Hi, welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to go through everything that I cooked this past week and then some other day-to-day -day things like outfits and errands and workouts. So, getting started. First off, on Monday, I started by making some paleo blueberry chocolate muffins and I did not decide to start filming this video until later in the day, so I don't have the full process for that one, but I do for everything else. So, those muffins are really delicious and I'll link the recipe below. The next thing that I made was salmon and uh, it was just kind of like a day where like I wasn't really thinking a ton about what I was gonna make and so I made those muffins around noon and then I got hungry again around like 4 30 so that's when I made the salmon and those were like kind of the two meals of the day and sometimes it just happens like that. But one of my favorite things to cook with is sambal olek is how I, how I believe you say it and um it just gives such a rich flavor. It's pretty spicy if you use a good amount, but it always complements salmon so well. And then I just made a quick little salad just with lemon juice and olive oil and then some flaky salt and chopped up some um, scallions and some Easter egg radishes. If you don't particularly like radishes, but you're interested in just like getting more vegetables in easter egg radishes are really good because they just don't have a ton of flavor at all so if you put them with some lemon juice or like a chili oil sauce any sort of sauce it just really absorbs the flavors but still has a great crunch and are just like healthy overall so would recommend those if you're looking looking for something like that so on tuesday morning i woke up and my husband sometimes sets the room up for the little Roomba to go around and vacuum everything and it will like get stuck on everything or knock things over so he puts it all in a certain way so that the vacuum goes around it and everything so I just got it all set back up um, to be functional for the day essentially. So next, I started getting everything ready to make coffee, and let's see what coffee I decided to make first. I think I was doing the stove top espresso first, and this is just a very cute, simple little machine. You can get it from the MoMA shop online, and they just have a couple of different like primary colors, and um, I think they have red and green and yellow. They might have a blue, but I don't remember and my sister-in-law got this for us it's very very simple to use it's like it's hard to mess up and um so i just weigh out about 18 grams of coffee 17 to 18 ish and that's usually a pretty perfect amount to where it doesn't overflow when you pour it into this little metal compartment right here on the left um and then if you have a barazza grinder you grind it on like 9 to 10 um, and then if you do like a pour over, it, that's usually on 20 for reference.
So then to speed things up, I heat the water to like 203 degrees Fahrenheit and then you pour that in to the little espresso maker and there's like a notch on the side of the wall on the inside of it and you pour to like just underneath that essentially and then you put um, the little top part where you are pouring the grinds into, pour those in, tamp it down really lightly and then put the top piece on and it's usually really really hot because of the hot water in there so then use like a little towel to screw it on and then put it over like medium low and it usually takes like a few minutes to heat up and then um when it's ready it just comes out and pretty much fills up this cup i think the cup comes with it if i remember correctly so it doesn't overflow or anything but then just turn it off pretty quickly because sometimes you'll get like a little second wind and some more will come out and it can overflow but if you just turn it off as soon as like you can tell it's done the first time you'll be good and i honestly need to get like a more aerodynamic little espresso cup because every time i pour it into my bigger mug it always spills and I love this mug. I got this from a flea market in Portland a couple years ago, but I think it's like 1970s-ish. Okay, now starting on breakfast, I think I have, what the heck was I making today? Okay, I'm making this on Sunday and all of this is just beginning of the week. So I'm learning what I'm making right along with you. Um, okay, I was making soft folded eggs with a bunch of dill. So this method for making eggs is very reliable. I first had it in Australian cafes like Two Hands in New York and then Great White in Venice and then um, Proud Mary in Portland. They usually do just soft scrambled, but it's kind of the same concept you let the butter get like as hot as you possibly can without it burning and then pour the eggs in let them sit for like a minute and 30 seconds or so and then you kind of twist it around the pan and you if you do it perfectly you get a few layers of like this really really soft just like gentle kind of scramble and it looks a little bit like it doesn't fully cook on top but it is fully cooked through and um i promise it's really really good if you just google like soft folded eggs or soft scrambled eggs gordon ramsay has a good method for soft scramble but then there are a lot of good um soft folded methods as well if you want like a very detailed step by step but as you can see it's just very very moist and i know people hate that word but it's a good word to describe things like this and i think we shouldn't be afraid of it okay and next i just wrote down some recipes in my little recipe planner then i decided to make some more coffee and the tasting notes on this one were sweet plum it's really really good our friend harris works for this coffee shop in san francisco so he sent us a couple of bags but this has been one of my favorites lately and i usually do about 22 grams for um a clean of wave and then pour to like 374. So later in the day, I got ready to go to the grocery store because I needed to pick up a few things for the rest of the day and then 
the next day because we had some friends coming over. I got all ready and then I realized it was way hotter than I thought it was. So I changed and put on shoes that were going to be way better to walk around in. Big fan of my Birkenstocks. I've always wanted this pair and I love them. So here is everything that I got from Whole Foods and Trader Joe's. This is just kind of for lunch this day. And then some other things we just needed to pick up, like bananas. I actually like completely scorched my bananas on the stove on the day that I made muffins. Like I put them on the back of the stove and they all got completely burnt and they were like, they did not, they were not usable anymore, sadly. Um, and then I just picked up some stuff for the next day. I was going to make fritters, um, kabocha squash fritters. So I needed like a bunch of coconut oil to fry them in and like some breadcrumbs for dredging so you'll see that for tomorrow's recipes and then at this point it was lunchtime so i was gonna make some tuna salad and i feel like tuna salad is a little controversial i feel like not everyone loves it and i feel like we've all had some traumatizing tuna salads in our past so i get it but stay with me because the way that i make it is pretty life-changing <laughs> And um, I don't make it with celery all the time. I personally do like the crunch of celery, but sometimes I just like to go without it and do cucumber instead, uh, as well as like a whole jalapeno. And I take out the seeds and the rib um, on the inside because it's a little bit too spicy for me to handle. If you like really like to be in pain, you could probably leave those in, but I would not recommend it. Then I rinse the tuna in a bunch of lemon and then let it fall out in the colander just so that it doesn't get too watery or anything and then I mix everything else in and I, I add a little more lemon juice like at the end but I usually do several scallions and then a bunch of dill sometimes I'll do parsley as well you can really do as many herbs as you want like the more herbs the better it just makes it taste really bright and fresh and um you really can't go wrong and this mayo from Primal Kitchen is amazing. It is definitely like a secret ingredient in here and you can use any mayo, of course, but I would say try this one out. And then I like to add capers and a little relish and season it well. Tons of freshly ground black pepper, more than you would think. That's usually my rule for pepper. Um, I just kind of keep it coming. And then, oh, I found a very perfect avocado. At the grocery store which has not happened to me a lot lately so that was a pleasant surprise and then i rinsed some sprouts or microgreens and then just did some lemon juice and olive oil and flaky salt for those and mixed that all up and then added it in with the tuna and then added the avocado but this is truly so delicious it is one of my very favorite lunches and if you use a couple or maybe if you use like four little cans of tuna this will last you like a couple of lunches so it's nice to like make a big batch of it and have it last for a couple of days um and then this was the last thing i made this day because nick brought home fried chicken sandwiches for dinner so the next clip will just be breakfast tomorrow Oh yeah, and then I'm putting Calabrian chili oil on right here, which is one of my favorite things in the world. My sister-in-law brought this for us from this amazing grocery store in Portland called Provador. I miss it so much, the grocery store and the chili oil. I need to find a place here that has it and nowhere it does so far, so I might make it myself. Okay, so Wednesday breakfast, I heated up some of my little paleo muffins that I made on Monday and then started on my pour over as usual. I had my silly little supplements. I usually do Super Beauty and Super You from Moon Juice in the morning and I like them so far. I've been taking them consistently only for a few weeks so I feel like with a little more time I'll notice a bigger difference. Next, I decided I should clear out some space in the fridge and I realized there was some very cursed salmon in a Tupperware that had been there for much longer than I meant for it to be and same with some other Tupperwares that I will not reveal how long they were in there, but just know it was long overdue. <laughs> okay, this is a good day of recipes. We were having friends over this night, so I, and they're vegan, so I decided to make cashew cheese and then kabocha squash fritters and the recipe that I was using called for half of a squash, so I was like, okay, I'll use the entire squash, 
and I'll do half with like vegan Parmesan cheese for them and then I'll do the other half with like actual um, Parmesan cheese just for Nick and I just to kind of see the difference and see how they shape up and like I just like to try a recipe for the first time as written but then I also wanted to like modify it for them um, so this is everything I'm making or I'm using for the cashew cheese and I have the recipe for this somewhere um, but I've made this so many times and it's really delicious. It, I'm trying to think like what specifically it tastes like because I wouldn't tell you that it tastes exactly like cheese because it really doesn't. Um, but it's really savory. Like it has a very rich savory flavor and the texture is really fun. You basically, you'll see this in a minute, but you add xanthan gum to a pot with water and heat it up and xanthan gum is basically like gelatin but it's vegan it's like plant-based instead and it makes things like a jelly texture so you'll see as i add that but you just pack in um a ton of spices and then nutritional yeast tahini um tomato paste and blend that all up and then you can just keep tasting as you go and just see what more you want to add. I usually add a bit more lemon juice and then coconut aminos and then just keep on blending it. Okay, so now I'm rapidly mixing the xanthan gum with water and it comes to a boil and it starts to stick really fast. So Nick is helping me pour it into the blender really quickly just because it all starts to set so fast. And then once you get it in the blender, you blend it up until it's all mixed. And then you have to work really quickly again to get it into the bowl because it sticks to the blender. It's a whole thing. You don't have to add this step. It makes it a fun texture, but sometimes it's just not worth it having to clean everything. Um, but then you let it sit in the fridge and you let it set for a couple of hours. So next, I'm starting on the kabocha squash fritters and uh, okay my grandma if she's watching this she's gonna be so nervous honestly i should shorten this clip this is so chaotic it was so hard to cut this knife was not working out at all so i need a different knife um okay i'm literally gonna make this clip so much shorter one second great got that sorted out and now it's less scary but these things are really hard to cut open so then i scooped all the stuff out of the insides and then you slice it into wedges and then two inch pieces. This is also pretty stressful. Nothing bad happens though. I don't cut myself. It, it all ended up okay. Then you steam everything and you steam it for about 20 minutes. I just have like an inch of water in the bottom of the pot and I cleaned it out from that gelatin mess. So it's just water in there. And then um, put the lid on let that get really soft for like 20 minutes so that it's much easier to cut and then you mash it all up for the fritters it's really hot and difficult to take out of the pan i learned and i did such a good job of putting those on the plate so you just slice all of the rind away and put all of the cut squash into a bowl so you can mash it up and um, if it's still not soft enough you could put it back in the steamer basket that's what I did because some of the pieces were just too like too hard to be mashed up with a fork and that's all I have like I don't have a potato masher or anything um, but then next I got started on the rest of the stuff for the fritters and I'll be the first to say I hate finely dicing onions it takes a lot of work and my eyes just burn the whole time I feel like I used to not be so affected by onions but they mess me up and oh there we've got the Roomba getting stuck on the chair as he does um, and then you just saute the onions for like five to ten minutes or so you don't want them like browned or anything but you just want them softened um, and then I grated like a cup of Parmesan and then added half of the onions into this mixture. I have half of the squash in one bowl and then half in another for the vegan one. And then to get ready to fry the fritters, I did two full jars of coconut oil into the pot. There's no water in there anymore or anything. And getting two jars of coconut oil out is like much more of an arm workout than I expected. Maybe I just have weak arms, but not as easy as you would think. So I used a cookie scoop to scoop out, I think it was 16 fritters each for 
the vegan ones and then the regular ones and then Nick helped me dredge and I did the vegan ones first into um, a vegan mayo dredge instead of like an egg wash and then into the breadcrumbs and then for the non-vegan ones we just did an egg wash and then into the breadcrumbs and then you chill them in the fridge for like 10 to 15 minutes and then you heat the oil to about 350 Fahrenheit and then at this point they got to our house so I was not about to have like my camera and my tripod out but here is some iPhone footage of the fritters they were really really good they turned out so perfectly crisp even the vegan ones they fell apart a little bit more but they were still really delicious On Thursday morning, I woke up to a package from Moon Juice and I'm finally trying their Cosmic Matcha, which I was excited about. And then I just got some plump jelly and a root that I do not know how to pronounce, so I'm not even going to try. But I love everything from them, so it's always nice to get some new things. But I got started right away on breakfast and I got all this bread from this really amazing place called Rapido in Silver Lake and um, I had a bunch left over so I got to have toast the last few days in a row which is my favorite this bread is so 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 good um, they make like baguettes and then sourdough and then like seed loaves so if you're in LA you should try that place out and I finally learned how to poach an egg a few months ago it is so much easier than I thought I truly don't know why I was so scared of it for so long but it only takes a couple minutes. I definitely meant to record more of my workouts this week, but just kind of forgot. So we'll save that for a future time. But I've been doing workout classes from Allo Moves and I think I have a code for like a free trial. So I'll put that in the description if I do, but I really enjoy them. I love like a 20 minute workout. I do not like to do more than that. So they have so many that are just 15 and 20 minutes. So they're perfect. Um, and then later that day, I wanted toast again because there's only so long that bread is going to be good for. Uh, but this time I wanted like a sweet toast. So I'm using Chroma Wellness cookie butter and it just kind of tastes like almond butter. And then rainbow syrup, some cinnamon and bananas. And it was so delicious. And then later on in the day, here's my snack. I'm having more of the vegan cheese and clearly could not get it on my cracker for some reason with some rosemary salt crackers. And then I think this is later that night. We're having a sparkling red. We're putting the dishes away. And what are we making? What are we making tonight? Oh, chicken. I know that raw chicken, the sight of it freaks people out. So I didn't want to do like too close up on the chicken, but you might see some mildly traumatizing shots. Um, oh yeah, I like to use New York Times shawarma recipe and then Molly Baz also has a good shawarma recipe. So I kind of do like a hybrid of those and marinate it just in a ton of spices, Greek yogurt and lemon juice. And the longer you marinate it for, of course, the better it is. But it's honestly really good even if you only do it for like 30 minutes, like if you forget. I know that marinating is just like, I feel like that's kind of lost with our generation. Like our parents were big on marinating, but like, I don't know, when you're 25 years old, you don't really like think to marinate stuff. And I truly have to think of it at like 10 a.m. in order to do it for a full day. And if I'm not thinking about dinner at that point, it just will not, it will not happen. Once it gets dark in here, the shots on the stovetop are just simply not as aesthetically pleasing as I wish they were, but that's okay. Um, the chicken gets really crispy, it's really juicy and flavorful, so if you're looking for a good one to try, try either New York Times or Molly Baz, and I'll link those too. Alright, now it is Friday. 
So on Friday, I was prepping to go sell some clothes at a clothing sale up in Topanga Canyon. So Nick made me some coffee and then... Oh yeah, I think I ended up making like toast and eggs a little bit later as more of like a brunch. So I was more tided over for the day. Tied over? What's the past tense of tied? Honestly, not sure. So everything I was selling is just like newer stuff that doesn't fit me properly and then a bunch of vintage and I have way too many white shirts. I think I have like 20 white shirts. So I'm trying to get rid of them and stop buying them because there's only so many uh, white shirts a person needs. Okay, this little herb tower is one of the best things I've ever bought kitchen wise. It keeps my dill and like parsley and cilantro fresh for so much longer. I just change the water like every day and then add some water to the top and then it has like a lid. So they just stay really moisturized and um, it goes like the full length of the herb. You can like make it taller so you're not trying to like cram it into like a little mason jar or something. So again, I'm doing the soft folded eggs and you just let those sit for a minute and 30 seconds to two minutes or so. So I started toasting the bread. I really love having one of these like stovetop little griddles. It's pretty much just nice for bread. Like I love getting those little grill lines and it gets it a little bit more charred, I feel like, than a cast iron does. Um, and then I just kind of got the salad greens and herbs all rinsed up and ready and some microgreens. And then I just usually do a pretty quick lemon, olive oil, flaky salt and a bunch of pepper. If I want to get a little more fancy, I'll do like, uh, like a lemon vinegar or a champagne vinegar as well, but I usually save that for like a dinner salad or something a bit more substantial. But oh yeah, adding parmesan, mm. That really elevates any salad, I will say. And then we add the eggs and some salt and then a little bit more cheese and cheese already. And then to close out, I got this package from Fable with a couple of new vases that I can't wait to style on my kitchen table, which I'll probably do next week. But thanks so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video. I will link everything I mentioned recipe-wise um, in the description below.